most common areas that we have are things with lithium batteries. So, so your computer, your laptop, uh, your vaping device, uh, your, your, your cell phone. The lithium batteries are a much more energetic uh, fire source than what was envisioned when you know, these suppression systems were, were designed and the regulations were created. Embarrassment, sure, but you're not in trouble. No. Right? Like, if that happens to your device, you're not going to get it fine. I mean, like, you're not in trouble for that. <laughs> they want you to take it out. They want you to let them know that it's there because they want to be safe. And they're not going to know it's there unless you say something. Welcome to The Air Up There, a podcast about the wide world of aerospace, presented by the Federal Aviation Administration. Hi there. Thanks for listening. We'll be your host today. My name is Deja Lee. And I'm Lucy Jabor. This episode, we're learning all about lithium batteries and how they can create a risk for air travel. We'll be speaking with an FAA transportation specialist who has tips on how to safely pack lithium batteries. But first, we'll meet an expert from the FAA Tech Center who has the coolest job I've ever heard of. He lights stuff on fire for a living, all in the name of aviation safety. Our first guest is Robert Oakes, manager of the fire safety branch at the FAA's William J. Hughes Technical Center, or Tech Center, the nation's premier federal aviation lab. Hi, Deja. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here and to spread the word about lithium battery fire safety. Robert, tell us what you do at the Tech Center. Here at the Tech Center, we do aircraft fire safety research and development. And the way I like to put it is we burn airplanes down here on the ground so they don't burn up in the air. Okay, so you know fire safety, which has a lot to do with the recent events regarding lithium batteries. What's the science behind the risk of lithium batteries and what technically causes them to overheat? So lithium batteries, they are great power sources. They power everything from our cell phones to our electric cars and everything in between. They have a high energy density, so there's a lot of electrical power in a relatively small volume uh, battery pack. Um, They can, however, uh, undergo a failure mode called thermal runaway. So this thermal runaway occurs if there is an internal short circuit within the battery itself where uh, energy will start to flow within the battery, and that creates uh, a good amount of heat. And if that heat can't be dissipated, then the heat just keeps building and building to the point where the cell fails, and you can have everything from fires to explosions, and it's a a very, very dangerous situation. What does battery heat dissipating mean? Can you explain that, elaborate just a little bit more? So heat dissipation really is just the transfer of heat from the battery to its surroundings, its environment, uh, something next to it. So if the battery doesn't have a way or a place to transfer that heat to, that heat just stays within the cell and it just keeps getting hotter and hotter. So, so that's why we recommend using water as uh, a method to cool the battery. So that water is a great heat transfer medium. It allows for heat to transfer quickly from the cell to the water. Do batteries pose the same risk on the ground that they do in the airplane? So the main difference between a fire on an airplane versus a fire on the ground is that in an airplane in flight, there's really no possibility for evacuation. Okay, so what are some signs that passengers can kind of be aware of or look out for when they are carrying lithium batteries with them? So if your device or your battery is starting to fail, you'll notice that it's it's getting hot to the touch, uh, warmer than usual. If the device starts to swell or expand or open up at the, the seams, that, that's definitely a sign that your, your battery is failing. Uh, obviously, smoke and, and flames uh, is, is a problem as well. When I notice these signs, what should I do? Is there anything that I can do myself in terms of cooling my phone down? If you do notice any of these signs, definitely, you know, get the attention of the cabin crew immediately. You know, they are trained to to handle these type of situations. Okay, step number one, if this ever happens, immediately let a flight attendant know. Absolutely. How often is this really happening? Is this something that's happening all the time? You know, you'll you'll see it on the news every now and then where where these these types of incidents happen. They're they're not you know very common, but they do seem to get uh, the most attention when they do occur. Um, you know, generally it's it's a single device that fails. Typically, if it does occur, it's it's detected quickly by the crew. The correct action is taken to extinguish the fire. And typically the flight is diverted uh, out of caution. 
as a passenger is powering off the device the only thing we can do to prevent overheating? Or are there other things that we can be done to avoid these lithium battery issues? So powering off the device is a great start. Um, it won't be using any energy at that point. Um, it's less likely to go into to thermal runaway. If you know that you uh, are bringing a device that you won't be using during your trip, um, it's actually best to have it at a lower battery level. So if it's at 30%, say, or lower, um, it's less likely to undergo thermal runaway and the reaction would be less severe. Um, another thing to do would be to not charge it. So if you have a device that is off, but you're still charging it, it could uh, also go into thermal runaway in that situation as well. So it would be best to just keep it powered off and also not plugged in. Oh, wow. It's good that you say that because every time I get on a plane, I try to ensure that all of my devices are at 100% fully charged. Is there anything else you would like to touch on or just a main takeaway? So the reason we're here really is just to communicate, you know, what the potential hazards are with, with lithium battery powered electronic devices. We're not trying to to scare people into not, you know, bringing these devices on board or always having the, them at a zero percent battery level for for safety. We just want the general flying public to be aware that, you know, there is a hazard associated with it. And, you know, to understand that there are procedures in place that are based on on research that we've done here at the tech center to effectively mitigate these types of situations. Robert, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us about this. I feel like I learned so much. Sure. No problem, Deja. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that, you know, the research that we do here in the lab is going to be useful to, to the general flying public and helping them fly safer with their electronic devices on aircraft. So now that we know more about how lithium batteries work and what causes them to overheat, it's time to talk about packing. I mean, where do we put these things? Lucy, you got a chance to talk with an FAA transportation specialist who knows all about hazardous goods, which is what lithium batteries are. And you got tips on how to spot a battery overheating and what to do if this does happen to you on your flight. So next up, we have FAA's Jay Sora. He's a transportation specialist who works with hazardous materials um, or dangerous goods. I don't know if there's a difference between the two. Maybe we'll learn that today. Uh, but thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being on the podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. So we want to kind of talk about lithium batteries today because we keep hearing in the news, like there's like a fire on a plane and they're like, oh, it was somebody's lithium battery. And you think that won't be me. But then you start to look at like how many things you own that potentially have a lithium battery inside of them. And it's like, oh, that could happen to anybody technically, right? Right. Well, I'll tell you what, Lucy, actually, your, fir your first question you start off with leads in very well to that. And that is, what, what are hazardous materials and dangerous goods and, and hazardous cargo? And just a simple answer is it's all the same. It's synonymous. A lot of the, the products that we use every day in our home are actually things when they're in transportation are considered to be hazardous. And lithium batteries is a great example. So it, it falls into the next question. You're like, what all has lithium batteries in there? Let's let's make it <laughs> you know, let's make it simple now. What don't have a battery in it now today? It's a litany of uh, of things that we have now that that come into the aircraft that that can introduce risk. So let's talk about packing because I think that's where things get confusing for most of us. You know, it's like we've got the carry on. Some people do a checked bag. Where should my lithium batteries go? Most common areas that we have are things with lithium batteries. So, so your computer, your laptop, uh, your vaping device, uh, your 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 cell phone. Okay, I'm going to talk about those three because those are probably probably the most common three that everybody has. So, whether whether you you have carry on or you check baggage or a combination of the two, you're usually going to have those three three devices on there, and people get very concerned. First of all, make sure that the batteries that you're buying for these devices that they're actually made for that device, and it's not a knockoff. You also want to make sure that the the charger you have for that battery is made for that battery. We'd like you to have your your batteries with you in the cabin. We prefer that uh, because if something happens, you or somebody else in the aircraft is going to see it, hear it, smell it, and you're going to be able to do something to to get help to get it mitigated. Whereas if it's under underneath the aircraft in cargo hold, that's a whole different ball game for us. Let's talk about vaping. Not everybody smokes, and it's it's been uh, illegal to smoke on our aircraft for some time now. So you can't smoke on aircraft, even with electronic cigarette or vaping device. I, I can't stress that enough. However, we want you to bring it on the on board with you again for the same reason. 
they activate accidentally or self-activate, we want them to where we can, somebody's going to see it, hear it, smell it, and they're going to be able to get to it to mitigate it so it's not a problem. Uh, one of the biggest common commonalities that happen is that people will have these things on their carry-ons. They'll have it on their, their uh, backpack or bags, and uh, they get on the aircraft, and the overhead is full. Not that that ever happens, right? <laughs> The over, <laughs> you know, never. Right. Never happens. <laughs> and a flight attendant will, will, you know, approach you and go, hey, the overhead's full. Go ahead. Just give me your bag. I'll gate check it here for you. Wow. Um, you weren't and- reading my mind because that was actually <laughs> going to be the next question I was going to ask you was I've seen that happen to people before. And I thought, wait a second. Well, and, and what happens a lot of times people panic. And what we want you to do is not panic to think about and, and say something to the to the flight attendant. Um you know, hey, I have I have my vape uh, in there. I have my my laptop in there. Uh, do you mind if I take it out? And they're not going to. They want you to take it out. They want you to let them know that it's there because they want to be safe. And they're not going to know it's there unless you say something. And like even and, uh, when you're on the plane, even if you even, even think about it that you, late, it's just yes. important to make sure that you do say something. Is what you're <laughs> saying? Okay. Abs- absolutely. Absolutely. Don't be because, embarrassed. Nope. Nope. <laughs> don't don't be embarrassed about it. It it happens every day. Um, but again, it's, it really is about the, the safety of the aircraft. Uh, another example that, that I, I mentioned just real briefly, that not that anybody carries these things, but there's these things called uh, cell phones. And uh, one, of the, one of the common things that happen with those is that um, people, they'll fall out of their pocket, they'll fall into the seat, and people panic, and, and they start to set their seat back up. And a lot of times that's where we have problems is because it actually gets pinched in the mechanism, um, and, and, and it don't do well. Uh, so if, if you lo- if your phone comes out, please hit hit the call button. Let the flight attendant come because they're trained um, to come help retrieve that out of that seat. I've actually heard that if you drop your cell phone, don't get it yourself. And I've always wondered like why cabin crew that's ever had to sit there and see the sparks flying out from one of these things, they they're going to make sure that they they are emphasizing that for every flight from there on out that they're on. Please, please, please let us know question i've been hearing about these little things that people have now they're like luggage <laughs> tag trackers or something and the whole point of these is you put them in your luggage or like your purse or like whatever aren't those lithium battery powered devices like it's a, it's a great question but uh not all electronic bag tags are the same but most of those are lithium batteries and and they're eligible for use in check baggage uh when it's less than 0.3 grams of lithium metal and not exceeding 2.7 watt hours don't worry about it. Don't have to store it in your brain. You know, you can ask the, the your air carrier ahead of time. Yes, and and uh, and you and and that way you won't run into you won't run into any kind of issues or problems. The other you know issues that we have are with spare batteries of all shapes, sizes, because even people will have them in their pocket, and and it'll come in contact with their with their keys and change. You know, metal objects, right? That'll actually conduct the electricity. Uh, and that happened to me, Jay purse lit on fire what do you say what was the three things you say see it hear it smell it is that right. getting that right yes that's exactly what happened because it was like does anyone smell something burning it was totally a spare battery in my purse and i had loose change in my purse if that was where you were on the ground could you imagine being in a cabinet aircraft setting just a, a little bit a little bit different of an environment obviously if this happens to you it's super embarrassing it sounds like what you're saying is it's better to like be aware say something really quickly about it and just own it because like it, you can't control it it could be anybody who has a device that this could happen to even though it's rare is my understanding right like this doesn't happen very often but clearly when it happens you hear about it no uh, you know to be honest with you it happens more often than, than what you what you realize if you do have it happen to you especially on an aircraft something like this say something as soon as you see it am i right here like embarrassment sure but you're not in trouble no, abs- absolutely. Because again, things things happen. Things malfunction. You know, there there are accidents that happen. Uh, you know, so it's it's not a it's not a malicious thing. If you have something, you're not sure whether it falls in that category or not. Do the ask. Ask your your air carrier. You know, they're they're there to help you. Thank you so much for your time today, Jay. Uh, your information was really helpful. Well, thank you, Lucy. I, I appreciate it. Again, uh, if I can plug Pack Safe, please go to to uh, FA Pack Safe. It basically, you could go in there, buy commodity, to take a look to see if any of the items that you have are considered to be a hazardous item. If so, if you're able to, to put it on carry-on, if you're able to put it in check baggage. And so please do check pack safe ahead of time before you get there. They also talk to your air carrier. Don't be afraid to ask these questions. When in doubt, ask. Please email us at hazmatinfo at faa.gov. We want you to have a safe, wonderful air experience. 
and uh, pretty much everybody in the industry, that's their same focus, keeping the airplane safe and everybody uh, happily along their way. Whether you call it a stick, a vape, or an e-cig, when it's time to fly, turn it off and keep it in your pocket or carry-on luggage. Do not put your electronic cigarette in your checked bags. Just like regular cigarettes, you are not allowed to use electronic cigarettes in an aircraft. You are also not allowed to charge your electronic cigarette in an aircraft. Why? Your e-cigarette includes a lithium battery or heating element that could overheat or cause a fire. So. Next time you fly with an e-cigarette, turn it off, keep it with you in the cabin, and do not use or charge it during the flight. Learn how to keep yourself and your fellow passengers safe at faa.gov forward slash packsafe. Thanks for listening today. We hope you've learned how to keep yourself and those around you safe when traveling with lithium batteries. And while lithium incidents don't happen all the time, they may happen more often than you think. As Jay said, when it comes to a failing battery, if you see it, hear it, or smell it on your flight, don't wait. Say something immediately to your flight attendant. And to make sure you're not introducing other hazardous goods onto an airplane, check out faa.gov slash hazmat. That's H-A-Z-M-A-T. And click on Pack Safe, where you can learn more. If you like this episode, leave us a review and share this episode with a friend because we all play a role in aviation safety. The Air Up There is a production of the Federal Aviation Administration. For a transcript of this episode, and to follow us on social media for the latest aviation safety news and guidance, visit faa.gov slash podcast. That's faa.gov slash podcast.